Hello friends, welcome back. Today's video is a gouache video, however, I am using it in a brand new way. So the footage that you see here is me completely clueless and experimenting and figuring it out along the way. The reason that it's different and a special video is that I am painting on primed wood panels. Typically with gouache, you paint on a paper surface like watercolor paper, and that is basically the most common way and it works amazing like that. So when I was thinking about doing these panels, I really had no clue what to expect. I didn't like research it ahead of time or watch any videos on it. I just jumped right in. But in my experience in the past, I, I knew that painting with gouache on any surface that is non-porous or kind of like glossy just doesn't work well. So I primed my boards with a special primer. This is the Winsor Newton Galleria Acrylic Medium White Gesso Primer. <laughs> it's a long title, but it's just a primer that dries completely matte. As soon as I put the first layer down, or the, even the first few brush strokes, I was a little nervous because it was flowing across the board smoothly. However, it was kind of pooling up in certain areas. And also because I was using the gouache very watered down at this stage, it was revealing like every single little brush stroke or even little bristle from the brush. So I was like, okay, this is not going as well as I thought it would. But I realized later, once this first layer started to dry, it gave me like this beautiful um, surface, this, this a certain texture that's really hard to describe that I could layer on top of really, really easily. So when you do this, my suggestion is to approach it in a few different layers. So the technique that I typically use in my sketchbook is to water down the gouache a little bit for the first layer or two, and then I slowly build up the thickness as I go into the other layers. And that is definitely necessary for this type of painting. Okay, so I asked you guys if you had any questions over on Instagram as well as here on YouTube, and you had quite a few. So I'm going to go through those questions now and answer them uh, as best as I can while you watch the process of this painting. So question number one. Are you using bigger brushes when painting on a bigger board? Yes, definitely. You can see this brush here is actually one of my oil painting brushes, but I was desperate for a bigger, really soft brush that could hold a decent amount of water and a decent amount of paint. I found that my typical uh, flat brushes were a bit too stiff and they were kind of like digging the gouache against the board or scraping it off of the board rather than blending the gouache into it. So I definitely had to change my brushes, change my strategy, and that was a little weird at first. But as I continued throughout this painting, I realized that these brushes are brilliant for gouache. And now I've started using them even in my sketchbooks with my watercolor paper. So that was a really cool discovery. So basically my suggestion is to just stick with bigger brushes and softer bristles. Okay, question number two. How different does it feel compared to paper? It definitely felt like the surface was giving me a bit more drag um, with the brush. So by that I mean when I sweep the color over the surface, it pulls a little bit. It doesn't let me just get one long, smooth brush stroke unless I water it down, which of course, you know, if you water gouache down, that's a whole other thing you have to deal with. So it required me to be a little bit more careful with my brush placement and also really a hyper aware of how each brush stroke is going to kind of drag and pull across the surface and whether or not it's going to blend into what's already on the on the board. It took me about, I don't know, 20 minutes to really get used to that. And I did another painting right after this one and it went a lot smoother. So, you know, the more you do something, the, the more it easy or the, the more you get used to it. So if that's a concern to you, just keep making paintings. Question number three, 
doesn't it waste a lot of paint? <laughs> this one kind of made me laugh because I think it was one of my initial concerns, but pretty much as soon as I touched the brush to the board, I realized that that was not going to be a problem. Because of the fact that I watered down the gouache in the first couple layers and then used sort of thick gouache on top but didn't really need much of that thick gouache, I probably used the same amount on this board as I did in any of my sketchbooks. Maybe even less because I was watering it down to get full coverage um, for the first layer. So that definitely should not be a concern for you and ultimately for me experimenting in this way is how i grow as an artist so i really have to push those thoughts out of my head because if you're just always worried about wasting supplies you really are gonna struggle to experiment and grow in the same way question number four it looks like there's a lot of texture in your photo doesn't the gouache flake off when it gets that thick so the photo they're referring to must be the one I posted on Instagram. And yes, there's definitely a lot of texture showing through in that. But the thing or the trick is that it's actually not the gouache that's creating that texture. That is the primer. I did one layer of primer and then I sanded it down and then I did another layer, but I left that second layer nice and thick and let a lot of the brush strokes sh show through. So in the end, my primer was that textured and it revealed a lot of the brush strokes. And because I'm using rather thinned down layers of gouache on top, I mean, I am getting thick in a couple of the final layers, but for the most part, that gouache that's on top of the board is so thin that all of the texture you see is basically from the primer. So maybe if you don't like the texture, you can just make sure you sand down your primer completely smooth or be really careful when you're applying it or use some kind of um, really large flat brush that leaves no texture or brush strokes showing through. And then you really won't have to worry about that in the end. Question number five how to not focus on the details when painting big <laughs> this is a big thing for me because i do a lot of larger oil paintings i've gotten used to it over time but one thing that really helps is to first of all use a big brush because when you use a bigger brush it's much much harder to get tiny little details and i even suggest that you do that in a small sketchbook use the biggest brush you can for as long as possible before switching to a smaller brush this will just automatically make it more difficult to focus on details and you really do think about the overall scene more throughout the painting when you're using a bigger brush. And second of all, it's really important to step back from your painting. So set up your, your easel or your um, desktop setup in a way where it's tilted up to the point that you can see it when you step away maybe back up five to ten feet however long you need depending on how big your canvas is and look away from your painting and then look back at your painting and it really shows you where you're at like what your status is with the painting and a lot of times you can get so bogged down and sucked into the painting you're sitting like a foot away from it and you're leaning into it and you're just obsessing over the details but when you back away from it and, and get that new perspective it really shows you the areas that you need to work on and lets you see the whole thing, uh, lets you see your painting as a whole rather than just, you know, one little spot with all the details. <laughs> so I hope that made sense. Question number six. What is the best subject to paint in a large scale gouache? That is not my th question to answer. That is your question to answer. That will differ for every single artist out there and that is completely up to you. Every single subject is a good subject, no matter how big or how small your painting is. Instead of thinking about that question first, I would rather you think about what the point of painting is. Why do you paint in the first place? What is your inspiration? What are you trying to capture in your scene? Approach it in a more personal way like that and the rest will just fall into place. Okay, so I actually got a couple questions about gouache on canvas. For instance, someone asked, gouache can be done on canvas? The cloth one for oils? And I was thinking, oh, maybe it wasn't super clear that this was a gouache painting on a primed board. So 
Of course, gouache can be done on canvas if the canvas is primed, um, because otherwise you have other issues, um, archival issues to worry about and probably also application issues. So depending on what primer you use, I think you could even use the same primer I used um, on these boards and it would be perfectly fine. The there's really only one way to find out and that is to just do it. So. You know, the, a lot of these questions and questions I've had in the past about gouache has made me think about how maybe when you're first approaching this medium, because it's so, it can be so tricky, there's like this mentality of, of thinking about gouache as like this precious thing. Like, it's really not something that you should experiment with. You're supposed to do it in one way and that's the way it works the best and that's how it is. But it's the same as any other medium or any other art form. Like you really have to experiment and push it to its limits. And by doing that, you learn so much about it. You are going to find a way that it works perfect for you. That isn't, that's not going to work for someone else. So, you know, I understand asking a lot of questions to artists that are doing that medium, like, you know, asking me about gouache, but I really encourage you guys to go experiment and just have fun with it. You know, buy four or five tubes that you decide are going to be your experimental tubes and you just go try them on a bunch of different surfaces, maybe a bunch of different brushes or different mark making tools and have fun with it because that's the whole point. And gouache is not that expensive compared to other uh, painting mediums and it's I think much more forgiving because you can always blend into it and use it watered down as well as opaquely. So yeah, I don't know. Just stop thinking about it as this precious thing and just mess, get messy and make mistakes and have fun. Okay, some of the other questions I got were more about subject matter rather than painting with gouache on board. So I'll save those for another time. And I do want to show you now how I seal my painting because this is actually going to be in a floater frame later and it's not going to be covered by glass. Therefore, it needs some kind of protective seal. And if you've seen my previous video, I think it's my most recently uploaded video about sealing gouache with cold wax medium. I can highly recommend the Dorlands brand. I've been using it on several paintings now, as well as my sketchbooks, both gouache and watercolor. I also got some great advice from you guys um, in the comments of my last video about how you can buff it to get a different look and that if you do really thin layers and then buff it out, the color barely changes or like the value barely changes of your painting. So yeah, I've been using it a lot and I'm getting a little bit better each time. <laughs> It'll protect your gouache paintings from splashes or, you know, the elements, whatever you can throw at it. And it'll just make it nice and safe up on someone's wall. Speaking of art on the wall, there's still a little time for you to get your orders in for my holiday print sale. These are a lot of my recent gouache paintings and they look really nice in frames and make great gifts. So please consider supporting an independent artist this holiday season and order your bundle. The sale ends November 15th. But in the meantime, I want to thank my amazing patrons for your support. If you want to level up your watercolor and gouache landscape game, go check out the dozens of tutorials on my Patreon and join us in Discord for some fun conversation. Alright guys, I will see you next time. Have an amazing week.